What's up guys, Vita Master William Grafe back with you. And today I want to show you the most incredible game played between my good friend and teammate here at the University of Chicago, Grandmaster Wonderling of the United States against um, Grandmaster Nihal Saran of India. And this isn't just any game. This is the Junior Speed Chess Championships um, where all the top juniors in the world compete in a very, very prestigious event. Um, Nihal Saran, the two-time defending champion, athlete of the year in India. Um, I wonder had beaten some of the top uh, other other top American juniors, grandmasters, in order to reach the semifinals. And right now in this match, he found, finds himself down three points and um, six and a half to three and a half and is playing the black pieces and needs a strong weapon to win this game. Nihal Saran, absolutely no slouch himself either. He is in the top 100 in the world. He's 26 something. He's only 17 years old. One of, one, one of the top prodigies in the world. Let's see Wonder Wonder Goth. What a wonder has what opening can he come up with here? What? Oh my goodness, he did not. Uh, let's see Daniel Naradisky and Jeffrey Zhang's reaction yeah, of said. this. It feels like a wonder. He's I think he's actually played better than he did against Brandon. Yet he's still down three. So he knows that he has to still step up his game and and maybe <laughs> what? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, continue. <laughs> no, 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 go ahead. Yeah, what is this line? What? Bishop C5, is that a move? Knight takes, I'm, I mean, I know it's like a move that beginners play, and then they take on F2 and resign. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I know okay, that so. this this is like one of the things I was taught earliest, <laughs> like Knight F3, white, black resigns. <laughs> Wait a Neal. second, so, oh, this is the Stafford, right? Knight C6? But it's some sort of a weird Stafford, right? Without Knight F6... Oh, this is not the Stafford? Okay. Wait, the Stafford is the same position with a knight on f6 rather than a bishop on c5. <laughs> so this could transpose. <laughs> I wonder smiling. Nihal's not smiling. This is, this is, I, I love this start to the three minutes. So they had no clue. Um, Grandmaster Dar Daniel Nardisky, Grandmaster Jeffrey Zhang, again, two of the top Grandmasters in the world, and, of course, Nihal Saren. Um, none of them had a clue what they were looking at. Is this a Stafford? No, this isn't a Stafford, right? Is this a transposition to a beginner line? Uh, and a wonder is just cracking up because I had shown a wonder the Bush gas gambit theory. Um, and here we are. It registers the eco code Bush gas. We have it on the board. You know, spends here 25 seconds, which is kind of a lot of your time in a three minute plus one uh, game to take the pawn. I wonder if that's an AC6 right away. Takes, D takes, um, D3, all of a sudden a wonder with a massive time advantage. And um, that's one thing these gambits can do for you, is that um, is that they really throw your opponent off, especially when nobody has seen this ever before, right? And so Nihal Saren um, naturally is going to find the way to defend. Here I recommend F5. I recommend F5 if you want to dodge a Stafford transposition. Um, um, and black can castle long and use these ENF files and strong uh, targets here and here. And I can get into that more uh, on another video. But knight f6 is a direct transposition to the Stafford. And here we have the tricky move h5, which doesn't appear a wonder actually new. However, c3, uh, forcing knight g4, d4. Um, Nihal is a very strong player and figured this out on the fly, it seems, because he clearly didn't know this line or else he wouldn't have spent half of his clock to this point. Um, so in the game, queen d4 by a wonder, but just castles for tex f2. And so wonder just finds himself actually kind of down a pawn after c3, d4. Um, but this is also something I've been saying, is that the worst possible case scenario out of these gambits is you're down a pawn. And you have a development advantage, right? I mean, this is terrible. This is, this is terrible. Don't get me wrong. Look at the Eval bar, bar here. Look at score leaving book at two here in favor of Nihal. Um, but but a wonder fi fights his way back into this game against one of the top players in the world and maybe the top junior in the world. Okay, what are we going to do here? We're centralizing all our pieces. Takes, takes, and allows knight d5. Knight d5, a very clever move, taking advantage of this pin. Bishop back, knight over there. And um, so Nihal just hiding behind this very, very strong center he's supported, but eventually he's going to have to make progress. And no wonder decides enough's enough and is striking at the center. F5, C5, things to undermine these targets for his rooks that he's centralized and now wants to attack. So this is Nihal's probably first slight error. Nihal never made a major error in this whole game. 
Um, Nihal's first slight error was playing e takes f5. And what he could have done instead, what he could have done instead is played, Jesus, rook over here. And now if takes, now we take this knight, take, take, and now recapture the pawn. So you keep the strong center, and that this pawn is toast at this point. And Nihal would be going up two pawns if a wonder proceeded like this. However, in the game, takes over here, work there, and now we, oh, Nihal gives up that strong bishop. So now we have opposite color bishops, and we have two open files all of a sudden, when it, before a wonder had none. Playing g takes f4 after trying to launch a strong attack over here on the king. And this bishop just needs to chew down that pawn chain. And in the game here, Nihal clogs up this file. And I wonder actually had a lot of opportunities to push c5, and eventually did, but um, delayed it probably a little too long. So we see here h4, we're trying to play h3 there to um, to make some trades around here and mess up that uh, structure. So h3 by Nihal. And now Nihal has this extra g-pawn, but it's completely useless. You'll never make a pass pawn of this g-pawn. You're going to push it, and we can take here. So now... I wonder, again, here Here was one of many strong opportunities to play here, c5, trying to open this diagonal for the bishop, which before was chewing on absolutely nothing here, can never get past that. But c5 here, uh, I'm sorry, c5 here, d5, trying to dodge that trade and then play c4 to, to lock that up, but, now, but first c4 by a wonder. And now if takes, this rook falls, and so now this bishop has a nice long diagonal, and now a lot of threats can be on the table. For example... Let's say Wander gets a couple of moves, puts that work on that g-file, and now here bishop f2. Bishop f2 would be an excellent use of that bishop, threatening uh, checkmate here by cutting the queen off. But, okay, they didn't have much time. You can see their time throughout this game. They have one second increment, um, so they're moving around here, moving around, moving around, and finally Wander breaks through with c5. So, not a good choice. He, so Nihal has an opportunity to play c4. c4 is a very, very deep move here that you probably could not come up with with, with 10 seconds on the clock. Now if c5, d5, and this pawn's already here. So it's about restricting this bishop. It's about not letting that guy into the game. And eventually, he has freedom, staring down the white king. And so the king runs. But so Wonder has already collected his extra pawn and still is on the aggressive because now queen c5, what a move, ignoring this pawn under attack because threatening checkmate. So now... Okay, we make a couple moves here. This queen completely tied down to that checkmate threat. This bishop useless. Nothing Nihal can do to break out of this bind. Just moving the queen back and forth. Moving our pieces around. Okay, but now, how do we actually make progress? We can't can't hit the king uh, an additional time. So we propose this queen trade. It looks like it should be okay, opposite color bishops. But Nihal needed to dodge this queen trade. Accepted it. And the problem for him is that this king is stuck in this box. With this bishop controlling this square, this king can never get out. And so all Wonder needs to do, he has a 3 verse 2 here, he has his king to use, he's just going to make a pass pawn right over there. And there's nothing uh, Neil could do to stop it, although he tried to make things tricky here. But after trading over there, we have this pass pawn. And so Nihal finally realizing that this king is just going to waltz its way here and support this, and eventually this bishop's going to have to sacrifice itself for that pawn. So in desperation, playing g4, trying to just anything to let that king free, but just en passant, and he's completely, completely tied down now with two passed pawns here. Um, king d4, c4, and this pawn is running. And finally resigns here after the third pawn is captured. So what a game! <laughs> Grandmaster Wonderling whips out the Bush Gas Gambit against Nihal Saren, albeit has a terrible position out of the opening, just really down a pawn for nothing, and does unfortunately eventually lose this match. But nonetheless, a Wonderling is 1-0 with the Bush Gas Gambit, shocking every GM who has reacted to it, at least Daniel Naraditsky, Jeffrey Zhang, and of course Nihal Saren, and probably even a Wonder himself, with the Bush Gas Gambit, um... Um, if it wasn't legit before, it's legit now. A wonder tried it. A wonder beat a top 100 player. Time's up for you to try it. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell for uh, notifications for what more Bush Gas Gambit content. F5. That's when things started taking a turn for the worst for Hall, right?
Right. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe the Stafford is just too good of an opening. Who knows? Somewhere Eric Rosen is uh, feeling very happy right now. He is proven me, and the Stafford proves me wrong once again. The commentators distrust it, and they enter. Well, I have entered the wrong side of history. Yeah, we really. Yeah, we <laughs> might we might have called that one too early. Like it, it looks so but it, bad. But it was completely winning. <laughs> to be fair, it was completely winning. Actually, Grandmasters, okay, it's called the Bush Gas Gambit. Get to know the name. Check the description, guys, to see how you can play it too.